All right, what's up, guys? Today we have a cut test video with a Kubi. This is the Kubi Coas, and uh, this is a, a video that I, I took over the weekend. Um, I'm really busy this week, so uh, I kind of banked a couple cut test videos for you guys to release during the week. Uh, I really, really like this Kubi. Um, I have a few Kubis I've really been enjoying recently, but. This one in particular, man, is a very good cutter. Um, I love the blade shape on this knife. It's almost like a super pointy spear point or like a, a, a pointy sheep's foot or just a, like a leaf-shaped blade, I guess you might want to call it. However you want to say it, um, it's very pointy, very thin blade stock, thin behind the edge, and we have just a little bit of belly and a very low tip. So while it doesn't look like a traditional sheep's foot or one cliff, uh, this is very good at utility cutting and slicing. So let's check it out. This is a great price. This is, I think, 35, maybe 40 bucks. I'll put a link to it down below. And the blade steel here is D2. So far, I uh, don't have a problem with Kubi's D2. Doesn't seem like they are really messing it up too badly. Seems to hold an edge like I would expect D2-2. <laughs> All right, starting on the regular thickness cardboard. Just breezing through it. Like I said, thin blade stock, thin behind the edge. Very just thin geometry overall. The tip is very thin. It gets very sharp, very thin, very pointy. Going against the grain, just destroying. Destroying. This knife reminds me of a Spyderco in a few ways. The blade shape, uh, the snappiness of the reverse flick. Um, it's almost like a pair of three size. Triple thickness cardboard against or uh, with the grain. Not a problem. Pushing a little bit harder to get through it, but it's cutting very cleanly. Now against the grain, having to push a little bit harder still but super easy. I mean, really nice clean cuts, no bunching up, nothing. The action on this knife is excellent. This is a very, very nice snappy reverse flicker. Great detent on this guy. Now, it did come with a pretty decent sharpening choil, but I ended up enlarging mine so that I could actually choke up on the knife. So that choil area, when you get it from, uh, when you get it brand new, it's not going to be that large. Also, I did a stone washing on the blade. Uh, they have a few color options, uh, but the blades are either uh, black or satin. Utility cutting, you can see I'm not even having to raise my wrist up that high at all. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love this blade shape, man. Really, really, they really, really do. Great utility cutter. Almost reminds me of the Artisan uh, Arius a little bit. Get my uh, pointer finger all the way at the tip there. Let's do a really curvy cut. A little more curvy than I usually do. Um, just because that tip is so thin, you have uh, it's very maneuverable. So, did great with that. A couple more. Yeah. Just a really nice kind of uh, detail-oriented... Uh, blade shape overall and a slicer like you saw you can see my uh, my uh, acid wash stone wash is kind of wearing off a little bit that's interesting let's check our edge I'm gonna get some real paper hang on here <laughs> so that's very interesting to me that my uh, my acid wash was kind of rubbing off there you can see um, I've never really, like, I, I've, I've done this acid wash on a few knives now, but I've never really done a bunch of cutting with any of them, so, um, very interesting. I'm not sure why that's happening. Maybe I'm not, uh, leaving it in the acid long enough? I don't know. But check it out. Our edge, still very nice and sharp, easily, easily slicing paper, nice long cuts. So, um, that cardboard, uh, did not seem to damage our edge very much at all. Let's move on to the leather glove here. This glove is different than the gloves I normally use. It's got like an extra layer 
under the leather. So you'll see here in a minute that I actually I end up going to a different glove because uh, this glove is uh, is harder to cut through than than the ones I usually use, and that's not fair for the consistency of the testing if I you know if I switch things up like this. But it is cutting fairly good regardless. But you'll see here in a minute I'm gonna go uh, go with a regular glove. You can see that extra layer in there. Maybe I don't grab a new glove. I can't remember. Either way, um, I'm going to try cutting off one of the fingers here. This is like one of the uh, kind of uh, welding gloves that have um, kind of more insulation than just leather, plain leather. Uh, usually like stick welding gloves have uh, an extra layer inside. But still cut it through. Uh, cut it. <laughs> still cut through uh, pretty well. Let's go to the strap. This is thick strap. This is not like uh, your thin strap you'd find, uh, I don't know, for, for light duty stuff. This is a heavy duty strap. Let's see what we got. Not all the way through. Pretty respectable though. Let's try one choked up. A little bit farther. About seven eighths of the way through. Not bad at all. Ergonomically, this is a really, really good. Um, I really thought I would have been feeling the clip, but I honestly don't. I really, really don't. Uh, there's not any noticeable hot spots with this knife. Um, pretty amazing. Two tries to get through the rope. Let's try to get through one, one try. Almost, just a couple strands left there. And I'm going to try one more, put a little, all my strength into it. And yeah, we made it. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy with that. You know, some knives get through that rope easier, but, um, I mean, for $35 knife in D2, that is perfectly good for me. And check it out. Our edge still slicing, baby. Not as well, that's for sure, but um, yeah, still slicing. We're going to um, strap it up here in a minute. Yeah, there's a couple of spots on there that are snagging up. That, that, uh, that rope, that polypropylene uh, rope is really, really tough on edges. I, th I feel like that's the one thing, uh, not the one thing, but uh, kind of the, the highest wear on edges, I think, is that polypropylene rope. I thought about switching to a softer rope um, because I, I have been noticing that it kind of leaves some scratches sometimes. Um, like when I did a cut test with my Chavez scapegoat, um, you know, I cut the polypropylene rope like I always do. And afterward, I noticed a few very, very light scratches. That's They aren't even visible in, in uh, most lighting. But if you catch it in the sun and you turn it the correct way, um, they show up. And it's got to be from that polypropylene rope. I was talking to Diener. He was saying that uh, that stuff can be very sharp. Um, so I think that's what's doing it. Uh, I, haven't, I don't really know if I'm going to switch it up. Um, I bought like some regular nylon rope. And it just the knives cut through it way too easily. So I need something tough. Um, but maybe... I don't know. I need to find something tough, but also won't scratch the blades. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. All right, we did some strapping. Let's see. Yep. D2 is always easy to strap back. We got a nice edge again. Yep, not a problem. So yeah, if you guys know of any types of rope uh, that you think would be tough for a knife to go through, but also more, a little more soft, I don't know if that that might be, uh, you know, that might not make sense for something to be soft, but also tough. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, let me know if you guys can think of anything. I don't mind putting very light scratches on most of my knives, but um, with the Chavez, I was kind of like, ugh, shit. <laughs> 
you know, even though they're very, very hard to see, only see it in certain light, still it kind of bothers me a little bit, and I expected it. I'm actually considering um, turning that scapegoat into a full user. Um, yeah, I don't know why I'm talking about Chavez here on the uh, the Kubi Coes video. Uh, anyways, yeah, the Kubi. The Kubi Coes. This is a great buy for 35 bucks, man. Uh, really, really very good purchase. Ergonomically great. Unless you have much larger hands than I do. Um, I, wears, uh, I wear a, a size, la size large glove. Um, if you have much bigger hands than I do, uh, it might turn into like a three and a half finger, kind of a squeeze four finger knife. Uh, uh, kind of a squeeze in four finger knife deal. Um, but for my size hands, it's really, really comfy. Don't feel the clip, although I don't like the looks of the clip. It functions great, and it's not a hot spot, so it's fine. Great snappy reverse flicking. Very thin slicey geometry. Love the blade shape. Very acute tip. And that's it. That's a Kubi Koas. Link down below. Thanks for watching, dudes. Please hit the like button before you leave, and I'll see you next time.